So I'm going to talk about my first, I was 50 years old and I was going to at last make my first visit to Russia. I was very enthusiastic about it. I had my airplane ticket and I was going to go from Frankfurt to Moscow. I was in uh, another city called Karl's Rule and I saw on television that there was some kind of a civil commotion after the Bolshevik revolution. There was a counter revolution. So I decided I wasn't going to go. I didn't want to fly into a revolution. So from Karlsruhe I went to Wiesbaden and I, I, uh, one night when I was asleep, it was about two o'clock in the morning, the temple president woke me up and he said, there's a monogy that wants us to speak with you on the telephone. And I thought, why is someone calling me at two o'clock in the morning? And I asked him who she wasn't to find out. And he said, I don't know, she said it's very important, but you have to speak with her. So I talked with her and she was with a newspaper from San Diego called the San Diego Union. And she called my office in Los Angeles or San Diego. And they told her that I was in Russia. And somehow she got the telephone number in Wiesbaden, Germany and phoned me. And because it's a lot earlier, it's about eight or nine hours earlier, uh, than it is in, Rus in, uh, in, in, in Russia and in, in uh, Germany, she said, uh, the, I understand that, the, that uh, Gorbachev is being returned to the, the uh, White House from the Crimea and uh, that the revolution was a failure, a counter-revolution was a failure. So I thought, well, I'll just go then. then. And then most people didn't know it. And she said, why are, I asked her, I said, why are you calling me? And she said, well, I want you to phone me. I'll give you my telephone number and I want you to phone me when you get to Moscow and tell me what's happening. Because this might be the, the final end of the Cold War between the United States and, and Russia. Very significant. So I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just go and see what's happening. So I went to Frankfurt. I was, Wiesbaden is very near to Frankfurt. And I went to the Frankfurt airport and I asked the ticket agent when I was checking in, is it okay to go to Moscow now? And she looked at me like I was crazy. And uh, so I went and there was only six people on the airplane. Most people just didn't know about it and they didn't want to <clears throat> fly into a revolution. So when I arrived for the first time in Russia, uh, there was a big long line waiting in the uh, immigration area and I thought it, it, it took me almost two hours to get process through the immigration and coming out to the airport to meet me were uh, Naranjan Swami, Kirti Raj, B.B. Govinda Swami, Prabhu Vishnu and maybe some other people. So we went from the, finally I got through customs and I didn't know if they were going to let me in because I, after all I was an inimical uh, American and uh, they let me go. They just stamped my passport and they, the guy didn't even speak any English and I didn't speak any Russian. And I said, I can go, and I, I just motioned out this way, and he said, go ahead and go like that. He went like that. So then I went out to, uh, in, the, in the car, Kirti Raja was driving, and we went from the airport directly to Red Square. It was about 7 o'clock at night, and it was very light outside. I didn't realize it was, a, it was about uh, the 20, 20th of, or 24th of August, and uh, it was very light. I, I hadn't usually seen the light in that time of day or night. So we went to Red Square and it was pretty empty, but the people were still very, uh, very excited. Very, people that were, the few people that were there were very excited that we were there. We were like the heroes of the underground. And uh, they had had a kirtan all, all afternoon in Red Square. People were petting them on the back with one hand and the other hand they had a, 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 a quart of, or a fifth of, of vodka or something like that, a liter of vodka. And we were the heroes. And then from, from the uh, Red Square, we went in the automobile to, uh, to the White House. And so the White House was all surrounded by people. And the people had brought uh, air mattresses and mattresses and metal mattresses and uh, big pieces of concrete and pieces of furniture to prevent the tanks of the Bolsheviks returning and, and taking over the White House. But was inside the White House was uh, uh, Gorbachev who had been returned from the uh, Crimea, and it was a very significant historical event. I didn't realize how what an event in history it was, and there were a th surrounding a little further away from the White House were were the media. They had tents and satellite dishes and cameras, and they were they were not allowed to go in, but they wanted to to uh, know what was going on, and, and and this was the final end of the very repressive Bolshevik. Uh, uh, mandate. It had been going on 70 years and, and people were very excited to know that it was coming to an end. So, uh, fine, and Kiri Raj wanted to go inside and give books. He was a book distributor to, to people like uh, 
uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and whoever it was. But anyway, uh, we were supposed to have a Rathiatra in Gorky Park, which is a big park in Moscow, uh, a few days later, but it was canceled or postponed because they had a funeral for the people who died fighting for freedom. They were on the, on the d democracy side. So we postponed it for about a week and this idea of a revolution was still in the air. And uh, people were very excited and we had the Rathiatra. It was a little drizzly and overcast and, and, and uh, wet that day, but we had it anyway. And um, it was televised all over the world. Our Rathiatra became very famous. It was uh, all over the world. And they interviewed me and they interviewed a few people. And when they interviewed Kirti Raj, who was an American citizen, how many, they asked him, how many devotees do you have in Russia? And he said, oh, about 10,000. So devotees were watching this, even on <clears throat> their television screens in the temples in America. And they were just uh, amazed that, that this, was, that this was happening. It was a, an historical event. Uh, like never before. So that was what I walked into in my first visit to Russia. And, and I want to congratulate all of you for celebrating the 50 years of Prabhupada's arrival because Krishna consciousness is very, uh, very widespread throughout the, the country. And it's a, it's a great thing that, uh, that uh, it has been taken up by the people of Russia, this Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna.